I am every Islamophobe's worst nightmare as a woman who is Muslim and empowered and loud and proud and from Brooklyn and Palestinian and I wear a hijab and I run my mouth and I'm on national television and I'm hanging out with you. So Linda Sarasor, Sarasor, Sarasaurus. So Linda Sarasaurus here got a lot of play recently because she organized the Pussy March on Washington. And some people thought it was a little strange that a supposed advocate of Sharia law would organize a woman's march. And are down for Sharia law in America. Sharia law. She's in favor of Sharia law? Wow, that's bad. How bad? Farzana Iqbal was 25, pregnant, and authorities believe murdered by her own family. That's bad. So, Andy, when did she say she was in favor of Sharia law? 20 minutes later. Peace. Oh, that's fantastic, Andy. Never fucking tell us how she advocated for Sharia law, you fucking ass. Now, now, maybe I'm just out of the loop here. If they made a video about Anita Sarkeesian, they wouldn't have to explain why she's horrible. It's just an accepted fact. So I decided to investigate the matter myself. Now, it seems the majority of the Sharia law claims come from these tweets. Which, if you want to pause the video and read, you'll see, uh... That's bad. Don't look great for her. And, of course, we have to bring up her bizarre feud with Ayanna Hershey Ali, where she told a Somali woman who suffered genital mutilation that she should have her vagina removed and be caned. Which, you know, is... That's fucked up. Recently, she sort of apologized in a piss-poor way. I don't know if she's apologized in the past. That's not what this video is about. This video is about what her and all the other Islamic apologists claim. CONTEXT! Now I must admit to being a horrible straight white American male who is not a follower of Islam, my knowledge on Sharia law is quite non-existent. And what better way to find out than to look at the article Linda herself is holding up as a standard of information to straight white American males that cheat on their wives. Not that I would know anything about the last part. Sharia is primarily about a personal relationship with God. So this first paragraph is just about what the word Sharia means. And for once, I don't care what a word means. So moving on to the second paragraph. Sharia is drawn from two main sources, the Quran, Islam's holy book, and the Sunnah, or the example set by the Prophet Muhammad. It encompasses both a personal moral code and general religious law that can influence the legal systems of Muslim majority countries. Wait. Great job, Huffington Post! We're only at the second paragraph and you've already proved yourselves wrong, idiots! You can't say something is primarily about a personal relationship with God, then turn around and say, Oh yeah, it's also a series of strict laws that dictates all aspects of society and influences fucking legal systems, you fucking assholes! Also, Linda's tweets seem to go against this idea, too. Hey, uh, God, can you help me with my FICO score? What? You have better things to do? Like what? But our personal relationship! It's also a living body of law. It developed over centuries and is still being examined with fresh eyes by Muslim scholars and believers today. Isn't that part of the problem here? When you have people like this... Do you know what Sharia law is? What about the equal rights for women? What, what about what that about is completely separate from also Islam. Now you can be who claim that Sharia law is X? What they're really saying is that their personal what? interpretation of Sharia law is X. They don't speak for everyone. No, Many religions have legal codes that offer ethical and moral guidelines for practitioners of the faith. Many religions are fucking stupid. From the canon law of the Catholic Church to the Jewish religious rules and practices called... Called... Hala... Hala... Hala Laka Haini. Hala Laka Haini? I don't care what the Catholics do, and I don't care about what the Hakalaka Haini Jews do either. No one in America should be using religious laws as the basis for a legal system. And I don't see Jews or Christians really advocating for that. Do corporations have religious liberties? Can the owners of the corporation impose their own religious standards on the corporation uh, itself? Oh. 
Maybe some Christians are. I'm sure liberals will support this in the name of cultural diversity. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's no such thing as white culture. But, Sitch, Muslims in America aren't advocating for religious laws to affect the government. Hmm, if that's the case, then who cares about the Sharia law ban? Because it only affects legal courts. Nothing in anyone's personal life or practices. I mean, I guess you could say it's a dog whistle for Islamophobia. Which, let's all be honest here, it probably is. But as we'll discover later in the article, they actually do want Sharia law to sometimes be held up in the courts. And just as the opinions about those laws vary greatly within each of these traditions, Muslims around the world fall in a vast spectrum when it comes to how they interpret Sharia. Do you know what Sharia law is? Asking a Muslim to stop believing in Sharia is like asking her, her, shouldn't it be them? Get your fucking pronouns straight, Huffington Post, you bigots. Asking a Muslim to stop believing in Sharia is like asking them to stop practicing their religion. It is a blatant attack on religious liberty. Except it's not. As I said, the ban is specifically about not allowing courts to accept it. I mean, I guess you could use the slippery slope argument, but what kind of asshole would do that? Wow, what a melodramatic pussy. Much like the Jewish Hakalaka Heine, which can influence everything. From a person's diet to the clothes they wear, Sharia is a set of laws that covers all aspects of a Muslim's life. Covers all aspects of a Muslim's life. Imbuing even mundane acts with a touch of divine significance. Oh, so Muslims are like the Japanese now. They are an intriguing people. From the moment they wake, they devote themselves to the perfection of whatever they pursue. I have never seen such discipline. According to the American Muslim scholar Imam Sahabi Weeb, there are five things the Sharia law aims to preserve. Life, learning, family, property, hey, look. property, something that should not be governed by religious law. From these main goals come laws about things like marriage, eating, worship, financial transactions? Hey, look! Hey God, about that adjustable interest subprime mortgage you were offering. Jeez, Jesus, it was just a joke. And many other essential aspects of living in a community. You mean like laws? I'm not sure what my personal relationship with God has to do with my asshole neighbor when he keeps putting his fucking hedge clippings in my yard. Sharia is not all about punishment. <laughs> oh my god, Huffington Post paid someone for this. Sharia, it's not all about punishment. You know, just the horrifying parts of it. Critics like to focus on violent verses from the Quran in order to paint Sharia as a cruel, draconic legal system that is antithetical to American values, because it is. It's true that Sharia does prescribe harsh punishments for acts like adultery. Oh, okay, so we're all in agreement then. But according to journalist Omar Sacre Bleh, whoever that is, many of these punishments have been taken out of context, repealed, and require an incredibly high level of evidence. <laughs> Holy shit, you're so bad at this! You know the thing they're advocating must be awful when these are the best weasel words they can come up with. It's like a sliding scale of lying. At first it's like, oh, this is taken out of context. And you go, oh, okay, sure, that's reasonable. Then it's repealed, and you go, oh, even better. Then they try to slip that last one in. Vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, or Sharia law. What was that last one? What kind of fucked up justification is that? If adulterers get some kind of fucked up punishment, who gives a shit how hard it is to prove? Now you may be asking, what is this punishment? And what is this high level of evidence? Well, the article doesn't say, because it's shit. Fortunately, another shitty Huffington Post article tells us. Does Sharia really prescribe harsh punishments like stoning for adulterers? Yes. Oh, okay, I guess we're done here. Oh, wait, there's more. But many of these punishments have been taken out of context, abrogated, which is just a fancy way of saying repealed, or require a near impossible level of evidence to be carried out. Hey! What? 
they just copy-pasted the same shitty weasel logic as the other article. For someone to be convicted of adultery, for example, there must be four witnesses to the act, which is rare. Oh, fantastic. You see, it's okay to stone someone for adultery, cause you need four witnesses. I mean, that's near impossible. This Washington Post article says that 1,000 women are killed in Pakistan alone for honor killings which is primarily killed for adultery-type offenses. But, Sitch, it says right there that stoning isn't even in the Quran. Hmm, that's true. But what it doesn't say is that stoning is specifically prescribed by various hadiths, which are followed as well as the Quran, you fucking idiots. Great reporting there, Washington Post. You almost had a good story, then you fucked it all up. Of course, they don't mention that if the woman admits to the crime, she'll be stoned. And no one has ever forced a confession out of a woman for a religious crime. Nope. That's never happened. Never. Ever. Not even once. Hey, feminists! It's okay if we start stoning women who are cheating on their husbands, but only if there's four witnesses. And let's be honest, unless the little sluts engage in a fivesome, how would there ever be four whole witnesses? Oh, but wait! What they also don't tell you is that the situation becomes reversed if an unmarried woman has the audacity to get pregnant. You see, under Sharia law, premarital affairs are considered the same as extramarital affairs, which means that there's an unmarried woman who's pregnant, she's getting punished. Unless she can prove she was raped. And how do you prove you were raped under Sharia law? You guessed it! Four witnesses! Good luck with that, assholes. I guess proving you were raped under Sharia law is near impossible. Do you know what Sharia law is? And while an unmarried pregnant woman won't necessarily be stoned if she can't prove she was raped, if she has the unmitigated gall to name her rapist without having four witnesses to back it up, she'll only be whipped. Oh, come on. That doesn't look so bad. Suck it up, pansy. Unless, of course, you're Aisha Ibrahim Duhalo, a 13-year-old Somali girl who was raped by three men and dared report it without having the four witnesses. She was stoned to death in a stadium while a thousand people looked onward. And yeah, some people tried to interfere, but they were shot, including an eight-year-old boy. But hey, at least they apologized afterwards for killing the boy. Aw, oh, wasn't that nice of them? What a wonderful fucking personal relationship with God we're having. I can't imagine why Ayana Hershey Ali, who grew up in that country, would have such a negative view of Sharia law, while Linda, who was born and raised in the first world country of America, wouldn't. The dumb fucking co- But Sitch, that was a militia group. Are country's governments even practicing this? The Huffington Post seems to think so. Here's a list of countries whose legal system is highly influenced by Sharia law, including punishments for blasphemy, apostrophe, and not praying enough. According to scholar Kish, Rash hid? Taking any religious text out of its historical and spiritual context will not result in an honest legal interpretation. Wow. I actually agree with that 100%. Too bad the entire fucking basis of all strict fundamentalist religions is to take religious texts out of the historical and spiritual context and interpret them literally, you fucking asshole! Rash hit writes, The most Muslim country in the world is likely America. Say what? Because America guarantees freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and freedom of thought. All hallmarks of Sharia law. That is one big pile of shit. A lot of liberal Muslims like Rashid like to do this. As I said earlier, just because they interpret Sharia or their religion in a fairly liberal way doesn't mean they're right. And everyone else who interprets it a different way is wrong. It just means that's how they fucking interpret it. And if we were to go strictly by the numbers, the liberals would probably be in the minority. And I'm not sure exactly how an under Huffington Post's own admission that countries which practice blasphemy and apostrophe laws, which is prescribed in Sharia, so how the fuck does that equate to free speech, free religion, and free thought? You do not need to worry about Sharia dominating American life and courts. 
Not yet, anyways. Terrorists win. Because nothing trumps the U.S. Constitution. How much you want to bet if this article was written this year, they would not have used the word Trump. No national Muslim organization has ever called for Sharia to supersede American courts. Now, I'm also of the opinion that many, if not most of the people and groups advocating for these Sharia law bans are probably doing so out of an irrational fear. Perhaps even a phobia? I don't think we have to worry in America about the Sharia law takeover. But I also don't think we have to worry about fascist Nazi taking over. And apparently to the commies on the left, that makes me a retard. Not only are these anti-Sharia campaigns unconstitutional, they also often end up hurting Muslims. Now this next part of the article talks about this case where an Iranian woman is denied an over $600,000 settlement amount for divorce even though this specific amount was guaranteed in her Iranian premarital contract. The Huffington Post blames the Sharia law ban for this injustice. Now, this case is not only brought up in various Huffington Post articles, but all over the place as an example for whiny liberals and Islamic apologists to point to, to cry about the Sharia law ban. And I'll admit, at first I didn't want to look into this because, well, reading through legal shit is typically long and boring. But oh, am I glad I did, because it's actually one of the most damning things about the shittiness of this article. First off, the Huffington Post lies about what the Sharia law ban actually is. They claim in the article, it is a ban against foreign laws being used in state courts which is a huge lie of omission. The actual law only bans the use of foreign law when it violates public policy or federal and state constitutions, which you may have already correctly assumed is already the way the law typically works in cases that involve foreign law in the US, which means the Sharia law ban, at least in Kansas, is 100% bullshit that only served as red meat for politicians to throw at idiotic rednecks to sate their fears of creeping Sharia. You know, kind of how Obama did the same thing with his bullshit executive order in regards to my gender gap myth. In fact, Kansas law already has the exact same statute that applies not to foreign law, but to other states' laws. So I guess they're also afraid of creeping Oklahoma law too. It's also important to point out that they say that the jury chose not to factor that contract into its decision about the case. Okay, well apparently whoever wrote this fucking article didn't read the case because it wasn't a fucking jury trial at all. It was decided by a judge, as often is in divorce cases. A good job there, idiot. Of course, the author of this article's lack of research can be easily seen when you click the fucking source that he linked and find out it's not actually the court's opinion of the case, which is where the judge tells us what the fuck to do, what the fuck happened, and why. Instead, they link to some fucking article written by a law student where he briefly mentions the case for like a page. Interestingly, when he says the name Muhammad in the article, he follows it with peace be upon him, which I found quite strange until I saw that he was most likely sucking up to his Islamic studies professor. More importantly, I found the student's use of the case as an example of the Sharia law ban in action as in fucking correct. And I'm not sure why the Huffington Post would turn to a secondary source instead of just directly reading the court's opinion. Unless, of course, it's because they're specifically trying to find something to validate their narrative. You see, the Huffington Post implies that this lady would have gotten $600,000 if it just wasn't for that dreaded Sharia law ban. But if you actually read the court's opinion, that's not what the judge says at all. In fact, he never specifically mentions the Sharia law ban as having any influence on his decision at all. The nice lady. doesn't get the 600k primarily for two reasons. The first being that her marriage contract with the $600,000 stipulation in it is in Farsi, which is Iranian. And for some reason, her crack legal team could not acquire an official English translation of the marriage documents that the court would accept. Great job, guys! The court can't rule on shit it can't read! 
The second reason is that the court said even if it did acquire an official English translation, it wouldn't have made a difference. Why? Because the state of Kansas already has statutes that existed before the Sharia law banned that say the exact same fucking thing as the Sharia law ban. That you can't use parts of foreign law or even other states' laws that would violate Kansas public policies. And the state of Kansas does not accept penalties in prenuptial agreements. Penalties being, if you sign a prenup and it said, if you were the cause of the divorce by cheating on them or something, then you have to pay X amount extra. The state of Kansas does not apply fault in divorce cases. And the court found the $600,000 amount as a penalty. Now I'm not going to go further into why they found it a penalty, because this fucking video is long enough as it is. But the precedent they cite for this is a case from 1985 about fucking Jews. My neighbors are probably like, should we call the police? We keep hearing this guy yelling fucking Jews really loudly. Not to mention, why the fuck would you be against a law that bans the use of foreign law when it violates U.S. law. Get your fucking head out of your asses, liberals. You know how many big businesses that I know you love oh so much, like say, cruise lines, try to fuck over their employees by forcing them to adhere to some other country's laws that are way shittier for employees than American law? They all fucking do. Liberals should be fucking ecstatic about these Sharia law bans and should be pushing for one on a federal level. They're tricking conservatives into passing very liberal employee protection statutes because of their irrational fear of a Sharia law takeover. Now are these Sharia law bans dog whistles? Yes. Does that mean what it literally does is wrong? No! Now the last part of the article goes into how Newty is an ideological hypocrite, because people used to discriminate against Catholics. Not only does this factually have nothing to fucking do with Sharia law or the point of this article, but I'm also pretty sure that everyone already knows Newt is a huge fucking hypocrite, considering he led the impeachment trial against Bill Clinton while he himself was cheating on his wife. So that's it. I spent 20 fucking minutes explaining to you what you already know. The Huffington Post is a fucking joke. But at least the next time someone brings up to you some bullshit defense about Sharia law being a personal relationship with God or discriminating against their religion or any of that other bullshit, you can be like, Charlie, did you do that? Huh? What is that? Charlie. Bad dog. But going back to old Sarasaurus for a moment, a lot of people seem to believe she's acting in some sort of conspiratorial manner, wanting to lull Americans into some false sense of security, then BAM! Sharia law. We're gonna kill you and have black people with foot-long dicks rape you in the ass tomorrow. I think it's far more likely that she's just a big dummy. The great irony here is that Linda, who was born and raised in America, who has never lived an extended period of her life in a country actually under Sharia law, has the gall to dismiss and attack Ayana's view on the matter. You know, a woman who was actually born and raised in a country under Sharia law, who suffered multiple physical and mental abuses because of it, and physically had to flee and request asylum from the Netherlands to escape an arranged marriage. And if you don't think escaping an arranged marriage is serious business, remember that clip in the beginning of the video? 20 people, including her father and brothers, to put a crude noose around her neck and smash bricks into her skull. Police say she had refused to marry a cousin her family had chosen and eloped instead. Ayana herself has said that when she was younger, she actually bought into strict fundamentalist interpretations of Islam and only realized it was bullshit when she was older. Linda here is stupid because her definition of Sharia law is based on her far more liberal interpretation that exists because of her experience in America, and she fails to understand how her first world privilege blinds her from understanding Ayana's first-hand experience with Sharia law. And it also seems her feud with Ayana might be fueled more by jealousy and not any ideological differences. 
I have、um, perfected the art of telling it like it is. Yeah, except you haven't, Linda. See, part of the reason she's allowed this Sharia law door to be opened by her detractors is because she hasn't been honest or open about this issue at all. The typical Sharia apologist defense is that all things critics point out, like stoning or blasphemy and apostrophe laws, or treating women as inferior to men, they all say that's not Sharia. That's a specific country's culture. But the thing is, that's not 100% true. We have eyes. We have the internet. We can all look up the specific passages that dictate these terrible things. Yes, they might not be in the Quran specifically, but as the Huffington Post admits, the Quran is not the sole source of Sharia law. There are other sources that are used as well. This hurts Islamic apologists because when you're being misleading, which they are, you're reinforcing people's opinion that you are acting in a nefarious manner, not that you simply have a difference of opinion than them. Now, interestingly, while making this video. I just happened to catch a report about a Jewish cemetery in Missouri that had vandals knock down over 100 tombstones, which is obviously a pretty fucked up thing to do. But what caught my eye is that the reporter talked about a Kickstarter campaign to help repair the cemetery, which of right now is over $100,000. Something did catch my eye at the bottom of the screen. Linda Sarsour. That's right. Apparently, she started this campaign in the first place. Now, I'm sure many people will claim this is just a publicity stunt or a cover or whatever. But I'm willing to give Linda the benefit of the doubt and believe her intentions in this matter are good. I guess it just goes to show how interesting and three-dimensional people can be, and the dangers of demonizing your enemies. I mean, sure, I put her head on a T-Rex body and threw her off a couple cliffs. But it's all in an air of levity. It goes back to what I said earlier about her motivations. I find it far more likely that Linda's just like every other dumb person, including myself, and just fell into the same stupid mental pitfalls as everyone else by assuming her experiences of the world, in this case specifically Sharia law, is universal, rather than that she's secretly evil and wants some sort of Sharia law takeover. I guess what I would say, if I could directly to Linda, is why don't you simply say that you believe in the spiritual and personal aspects of Sharia, but not the judicial aspect? Of Sharia, you can't dismiss that they don't exist, because they do. But you can say that you don't believe in those aspects. Seems like a pretty straightforward thing to me. Everyone, especially in Western countries, cherry pick stuff out of their religion all the time. Even the most conservative of Jews don't give burnt offerings up to God like he's fucking Zeus or something, and don't yourselves give into the same hyperbolic language as your opponents. Because there's nothing in the current Sharia law bans that would prevent you from practicing your religion in a way that you're already practicing it in America. And by claiming otherwise, I don't know if it's because you're simply being hyperbolic. I don't know if it's because you think it's a dog whistle. I don't know if it's because you believe it's a slippery slope, or I don't know if it's because you actually want some tenets of Sharia law to be acknowledged by courts. You need to be open and honest about what Sharia is, not only to yourselves, but when talking to other people. Because every time you're even slightly dishonest, you give space for your opponents to inhabit and claim everything you're doing is dishonest. Oh, and Huffington Post, stop fucking sucking. Fat chance, I know. Hey. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter, helping justify my existence.